So who can remember the last things that uh, I made mention of? If you're making a unified design system to contain the color palette, type style, shadows, button, input field, and uh, read. Okay, since no one is responding, let's continue. So I'll create a frame now. I'm going to create a frame. So before you start designing, okay, can you hear me now? Can you hear me clearly now? Yeah, this is much better. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do because um, how this happens is that when before you start any project, so when a client meets you for a project, so um, when you're done signing the non-disclosure agreement, there's something called NDA. So most times when you're being hired, you have to sign a document for the non-disclosure agreement, is a document where you sign not to um, expose your design to the public, like the design you're coming coming up with just by the fact they are the one that came up with the design the design belongs to the company okay what i'm trying to explain is that whenever um, okay so what i was trying to explain is that when you have a project when you are done signing the non-disclosure agreement document. So non-disclosure agreement is basically a document you sign not to post the design you did for that company or portfolio. There are some work, there are some designs you come up with for a particular company um, or whatever. They don't want you to post that designs on your portfolio. So it's just like you are paid to design for them. So because I know most times as Junior designers want to get projects so that we'll be able to put the designs on our portfolio. But whenever you sign the non-disclosure agreement, meaning you, you are not going to put all those designs you did for the company in your portfolio. And if you go against the documents, you are going to be sued um, by you'll be sued um, by the company. Most times it can get into problem if you go against the non-disclosure agreement. So I'll be talking more about that later. So when you are done signing the non-disclosure agreement, so the client will give you the logo because it's through the logo, you will tend to know the color that the client is using. So the first thing you need to create is your color palette. So it's through that logo, you'll be able to create your color palette. So I'll, for, I'll just create a dummy logo. So I'll right click, go to Figma. There's this particular Figma plugin that can help you generate a logo. But in reality, the client will be the one to give you the logo. So, so I'll right click, go to the plugin. So the name of that plugin is, uh, is I have two plugins here that I use whenever I want to generate. So we do have logo creators and logo fetch. So let's click on logo creators. So let's wait for that to load. So these um, logo creators have different kind of logos. So most of these logos are in SVG. So um, let's just look for one and take. So let's say, for example, this is the logo uh, being given by the, or let's just use this one. I'll just click on the plus. And now I got in the logo so i'll just copy this this was once i got before from that um, logo creator that's why it's there so i'll come back to so i'll come back to my frame so remember i created a very big frame so i'll right click paste here paste my logo here because from this logo we're going to create 
different shade of colors that we can use for our buttons, text, background. So you see how I'll derive that in a bit. So here is my logo. So let me um, I'll create the text so that I can just write a logo. This is very small. I'll use my skills to increase the text. I just want to give each section a level. So I'll just grab this logo. I will just give it over. So I'll just um, duplicate it, then lock this one. Okay. But next thing now we're going to create is a color palette. Just to pick it this text that is for my type. Okay, so I'll just close log this. So for my color palette now, I'm going to draw a square. So you, you see what I'll do with the square in a bit. So I'll just draw the square here. So I'll give this um, square a corner radius of 20. Then I will duplicate square into like a um, four plus six. So I'll come here, pick here. So I'm basically using why I created this square is because I want to pick the colors that are on this logo. So remember what I said: if the client gives you the logo, remember that they are not just assuming colors. Sometimes if you are the one that did the user research, come up with colors that will suit the brand. But in majority of the cases, the client will be the one to give you the logo and the colors that you'll be using to design your app, you generate it from the logo because that's in line with what the client will want. Because so most clients, when they revise the code, when they review your app, they will start asking questions. I don't like this color, especially when you choose a color that is not in line with the logo color. So. If you see, if you look at this logo very well, there are like um, four different colors or three different shades of blue here. So the first one I picked, I clicked on this one, then clicked here, got my color picker tool and picked this particular first color. So I'll repeat the same for the second square. So I'll click here, and pick, click on my color picker, then pick this one. Come again, click here, click this lighter shade, and I'll see to click this in the square again. So I'll click here and click on this one. So you can see here, okay, I think this last color is the same with this here. So I'll bring this one down. So most times when you're choosing um, your, because from color, we're going to choose the one that we want to use for primary, secondary, or a color that we can use for background. So majority of the time, your primary color is a color that pops because your majority of the time, not majority of most of them, your primary colors will mostly be used for your buttons 
So you know that whenever you're designing a button, your button is not supposed to be dull. So it's not supposed to have a dull color. It's supposed to have a color that pop. So that when a user see that color on the button, the button will be calling for the user's attention. So um, for the for this particular um, um, application we want to design, so this will be our primary color here. So I will just name it. So I'll come here, call this here. I'll write the text on top. Primary color. Just click enter. I just want to name it so that I will know the color I'm using for my primary color. So I'll just use um, a skill to be fitted. I'll just make sure the text is in the center. It's in the center of this rectangle. So another thing you need to note is that okay, let me just call this um, call this second second color. I'll call this secondary secondary color. So I'll just put these two together. I'll put that shape select the text of the people, that shape select the text and uh, and the square because i hope everyone is following if you're following so far i see something in the chat section if you understand what i'm doing I see something okay yeah okay so let's continue okay let's continue sorry i'm sticking in the okay let's continue so So the th another major thing you need to do is that you need to save this color. You need to create a color style so that this color you can reuse it whenever you want to use it. So let me show you how to create a color style. So I will duplicate on the um, rectangle that has this color. Come to this place. I see where I click. I click on the rectangle that has the color. Then we have this one. This place called fill. I'll click on this four and dot then click here then click on style and i'll call this primary primary color what i'm saving style here is that whenever i want to use it i don't need to come here copy the color code then go back and paste it so that's why i'm saving it on figma so if for example i'm creating a button here for example so let me say here this is a button. Let me give this a corner reduce of 10. Then I'm creating me and write the text here. Maybe this is a um, get started. Get started. So, for example, this is a get started button. So now I want to change this color because right now this ash looks very dull. So, for example, I want to change this color. Normally, you need to come here, copy the color code if you want this particular color. If it's this particular color you want to use, I'll come here, copy the color code, and go here and paste. But now that I've already saved the style on Figma, I'll come to this place. 
click on this place if i scroll down now you see style this is the primary color i saved so i'll just add it making my work very fast and also teach us how to create components so that's the yeah, other those things come to come to handy. So the secondary color too, I also save it too. So let me save save it here. So this click here on style, we got this second green. Question I asked what I was trying to uh, I was trying to ask who remember the extra two things called when um, things you need to specify in your design system. I made mention of icon, made mention of spacing, made mention of grid. So let me click here, save this one. Click here for this second one. Second color. The star. So if I have other colors, I'll still do the same thing. So now, from this color now, so from this primary color, I want to derive a color that I can use for my text. For my text. So I'll click on this color now. Then from this color, I'll get a darker shade of blue that I can use for my text. So this is not um, pure black, it's blackish blue. So I'm using that color for my text. So when coming up with your color, you also have, so let me change this here. Text color. Change it to text color. So when coming up with colors, it's good you also specify your gray and um, come up with a gray color that you can use maybe for your disabled state. Um, of course, you might need a gray color. I'll just call them um, create a gray color here. I'll just call this on gray. You see how we use this color. So another thing you have to do is the assassinary you might need it the, the background color we can use it for background but most you know, of the time whenever i'm designing i like to make my background color to be very faint it will be like between white and the the blue so it's just like um a very lighter shade of blue so something like this can be used for background color so i'll just a black I give the text a black color so that we can see it. So I'll call this background I call it BG short form for background BG color and I'll just do this. So another thing you also need to state is your color that you use for error states and successful states. There are some scenario that somebody might enter a wrong password. You need to color your input with a particular shade of red so that the user will know that this the information that entered on the input field is wrong, especially when the user face error. Then in a situation where something and uh, maybe the user enter the um, correct information, you also need a, like a green color which is shows successful state so i'll just create um, two colors okay. just, um, you can see how i'm, uh, how I'm um, coming up with different color here i don't know if you are following so right now i will choose a particular shade of green that i can use for a successful state and choose another color that i can use for my error states because most times um there are some time that and this why the fact you have done your research is she the only one is he only you that i can't see my screen which other person that cannot see my screen i 
Yeah, can see your screen. Okay. So here that maybe is your network. Okay. Okay, so let's continue. So now I will just call this. So the same way I saved all these ones as color styles, I will do that for the rest. For the rest here. So I will duplicate this. Just call this um, success. Just call this success color. So now, so now we have created this. I make sure you save all of them as um, um, color style so that you can always reuse it. So another thing we also need to state is our text, the font sizes we are going to be using. So if, for example, the project you are working on is a mobile app, the font sizes of a mobile app is different from the font sizes of a website. For a mobile app, the highest number, the highest font size can be 28 down to 16 or 12. So depending on what you want to use the font size, but from but for a website, the um, largest number can be 40, 60. So let's just uh, just uh, create it to understand better. So I'll call this uh, font font sizes. I'll just say uh, five. Type styles. So I call this type type styles because you need to select the type of font that you want to use, the font size, and the font width. So you see that in action now. Most times, the kind of fonts you use for any design project varies on the, what the project is all about. If um, there are some time that before you start any project, the client has already created the logo, so there are some time you need to come up with colors that will suit that particular project. Like if you are designing a children app now and the client did not give you logo, you need to go and research on the type of colors that will be best used for children. And the type of font that be best used for children apps, because for children apps you can use some of the fonts that are kind of playful. So the type of font and colors you use varies on the project. So now we're like looking at a scenario where the client has already given us the logo. So now the colors we'll be using for our project will derive it from the logo. So now we want to create the type styles. So now for this particular project. I might decide, um, depending on the project, maybe uh, my font, font style, maybe some of the font style. I might decide to use Nonito Sans. I'll just make this font, font um, style. So I'll just call this. So just call the name of the font I'm using. Here's the name of the font. So this is the font style. So the next thing we also need to specify. 
now we have the font that we're using is on this page itself. So the next thing now is the font sizes and the width. So remember if for example this is for this is for a mobile app. Our biggest font size is going to be for the font size going to be 28 so I'll change this font I wrote it out here I'll change this font this particular font to the size of this 28 because the same way we, we save the color styles we can also save font styles I'll change this to 28 28 you know the time I'm saying oh the font is too small because most times when you're designing you might be zooming out like this you might say oh because I'm not seeing the font the font is very small and the thing is that if you mistakenly use some and um, one thing you need to know is that if you don't work on this kind of sizing you use for your app like the way you size your element the kind of font size you keep the way you size your shapes or the size of your button or whichever element at all is going to affect the development of uh, when the developer is going to be developing that your design because on your figma the design might look very great but when it's being developed it will look very awful so majority of the time it's actually the fault of the designer because the designer did not um, use the right spacing use the right font sizes just assume that use any size in at all so um so that's the so that's like one of the issues that um designers usually have when their work is being coded so as we move on and talk more about that so now this, this font size uh, for 28 so majority of the time this 28 is used for headings for example um, headings and um, your different screens of your mobile app you might want a font that is very bold so i'll call this 24 bold. 28 font size with 8 bold. So um, there are some scenario that you also want to make it a font sizes that is semi bold, like this, or maybe extra bold. I think bold is okay or semi bold is, is fine. So you can see, I'm just for the fact I'm writing font size with 8 here. I change the uh, style of this font to the actual font and using the actual width and the actual size of the font. So the next thing you also need to specify is another size. So one thing you need to know about um, design is that whenever you are choosing sizing or spacing, you need to make you choose numbers that are divisible by 8, 4, or 2. So if you watch now, most of the numbers will be coming up with for our font. They are actually numbers that are divisible by 8, 4, or 2. So 28 can go into 2 and um, then we can go into two and four. So let's create a more font sizes. You understand what I mean? Numbers that are divisible by eight, four, or two. So as we move further, it will become clearer. So the next font size I'm going to be using is um, size. You can make use of size 26. So right now, the next font size, I don't want to go to size 26. It's based on preference. I want to go to the size 24. This font 24, and this for 24 is divisible by an 8. So here I will change the font size to 24, then give this one bold. Put this one bold, and I'll duplicate this. Put this one semi bold. So the next font size I want to use after. 24 and I decide to go with um, 18 but I want to go with 16 so it's up to you so the thing is that whenever you are choosing numbers for any size now, so you have to make sure you do a number that is not an odd number or the number that is not a decimal number it will be an even number as we move on most of this stuff will become better when we start designing so just try to put along what I'm 
So now this one, the next one size will be 16. This 16 is mostly for description text. So I'll make it regular. So I'll make it regular. I'll change the font size here to 16. 16. Sorry. Let me change this to and see If you are following, say something in the chat section, I'll be sure you understand. So I'll change this to say me bold. And I'll change this to regular because that's the font. So some people were asking that um, the because I dropped the tax um, yesterday, so some people were like their work has not been graded. So your work will be graded for the end of today. So you receive your grading. If you have done the first tax in the end of the you receive um, your grading so that you're able to move on to the second tax that was given. So, so here we have 16. So this 16 is mostly used for description and description test. In the front 28 mostly used for header. That's why I, I made it bold. So for those that are saying they are lost, you will have to rewatch the YouTube video. So you got the YouTube video will be posted, so you just can watch it on the YouTube channel. So for this system, I won't want to use um, this particular font um, style I chose. There is no medium. There are some font size that you are going to um, Font style, rather, they are going to use it. it. Has different font weights here. So let me show you what I mean. So let me choose a font here. Lato, I see compact to the font. So this is a font Lato. So you can see it has medium. It has more font weight than the uh, Monito Sans that we were using. So Monito Sans does not have medium. It only has regular. So most of the time when you are designing, you observe this little change. So after um, 16, so the next font size will be, will be 14. 14 regular, so I'll just change this to 14. Then the smallest font size is going to be 12. So that one, as a scenario, you might just want a very small stem text and view. In the very small and font. So all of these are all um, regular. Maybe 12 and use a first and also have a semi-bone. I'll change this to semi So I'll just um, arrange this like font very well. So now I've had all my um, sizing now. So the thing now is that the admin or just send me a message on discord let's see i don't know if the admin will accept or we just the admin be completely me send me a message on discord but i'll see how that can be done so um so now we we'll specify our type style so the next thing now we need to do now is the buttons we need to specify our buttons so I will extend this mine. So remember what I said. The same way we save these color styles. 
<clears throat> you are also going to you are also going to save the fonts and style too so let me show you what i mean so i'll click on this font and click and come here click on this four dot click on this plus you can see here create a new text style so i'll call this um, header you can give it any name, but you have to give it a name that you can remember. In I just want to call it a name that I want to see to know what this font I font style is all about. I just use quick style. So here I'll do the same for this. I'll come here, create this style. If you look at this bit, I see there's a name and description. So most and there are some scenarios because remember as a product designer you don't work alone you work with a uh, with a developer now you work with project manager there are different people you'll be working with graphic designers so most times there's a time that when you use a particular font you need to like explain some things about the font but it's not all the time so there are some time when you're coming up with your design system you need to give some annotation so what i mean by annotation is like a little explanation of some things in your design system so that the developer can understand because this um, design system is does not only help you it also helps the developer so let's look at some benefits of some design system so that we understand better so design system fasting um, helps your helps you to work very fast whenever you're designing it saves time it helps you to work very fast because we already have some of these elements available so imagine a scenario um, where you are trying to design an app and you don't have your colors your buttons your shadows or your grid all those things ready before you start designing so when you start the first screen you start designing everything from scratch but in a scenario where you already have your design system ready so it's just to pick from there and start design just like what we um in our last class we reviewed design system of figma so if for example figma hires a new designer so designer will not need to start designing from scratch designer will just go to their design system pick any element or component that they need and use it to create any feature that figma wants them to create Um, somebody is asking Dixon, does that save the text color? No, it's only the text size, not the text color. So the one we need for color is different. That one that we save is just only for the text size, the font style, the font width, and the font size. That's only what that text style saves. Yeah, that's it. So another um so another importance of design system is that you don't need to start rethinking your UI component. So let's um, let's look at uh, let's come back to this link design systems of Figma.com. Let me explain better so that you understand what I mean by you don't need to rethink. So let me come to design systems for Figma.com. So now let me try to load this. Okay, I think my network is having some issues. So let me. I what I wanted to open is um cool material material three this is on to do this um official website official website but they also um have a figma file where you see all the components that they use whenever they want to create any of the application so this is like the upgraded version of material does i the upgraded version of their design system so let's go to the old version which is m2 so here i'll just type m2 here 
M2 dot material value. So let me open the Discord so that what's this thing? So when you come to this um material.io, let me show you how to use the data for that that review the the Figma file of it. So let me go to If you come down, the little called component, you can see here design developers. Remember what I said in our last class that design system does not only help you as a designer, it also helps the developer too. So, because so there are some scenarios where when designer come up with the design system, the developer will start bringing out the code base of that design system. I will explain a lot about that later. So Yeah, can you hear me now? Looks like my network kicked me out. Um, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Say something in the chat section. Okay, so let's um let's continue. So now I'm on um. Okay, let me share my screen. Now I'm in material um material2.io. I clicked on components and came to this one. So there are different components that you need when you want to design. So let's review buttons. An example of a component is buttons, we have cards, we have checkboxes. So here this material um your design you can actually come here to read so it like a blog. So here they show you how to design a button. They will show you how to use a button and different states a button should have. So you can see there are different type of buttons. We have buttons that are text buttons, outline buttons, and buttons that are filled like this. Then we also have buttons that are like this too, just icons. They are still buttons. So you can read here to know how to place it, to know their names, to know how to position them, to know how to use it. So you can take it upon yourself and say, okay, today I want to learn how to oh so sorry i think it's my network yeah so sorry about that yeah can you see my screen now Can you see my screen now? Okay, so sorry about that. Let's, let's continue. So now this is material m m2 material.io. So how I came here was I clicked on the components here. So it brought so I clicked on these buttons part. So what I was saying is that if you come to this material 2 design, it's like a blog. So let me make sure that everyone uh, somebody saying my screen has disappeared again. Can I use this and right now I'm on material two um m two material dot are you can you see my screen now? Okay, so let's continue. So now this particular place, you can see that 
they are trying to teach us here how to create a buttons and let us know that there are different type of buttons because most times when starting out as a junior designer you might not know that there are different type of buttons we have buttons that are text button buttons are like this text button we have outline buttons we have field buttons we have icons that are like this that are also that are also buttons too so even when creating buttons you need to know how you place your element, the sizing you should use, the sizing between each element. If, for example, your button contains an icon and a text, there should be um, the right spacing between the icon and text. So you can take it upon yourself and be like, oh, I want to learn how to design a button. I want to learn the different states of a button. So let me show you what I mean um, by states. So if you look here, they said enable state, disable, go back, focus, and press. So enable state now is when, um, let me go to a website and, and show you. So there is another link that's also going to help us when we want to come up with design system. We have this link here, checklist.design. So let me open it here. Checklist, this is a very good resource. system. So let me drop the link. Discord channel. So, all the links I'm dropping them on the Discord channel. So, I've dropped two links on the Discord channel. So, this enable state is when the button is active. Disable is when the button is disabled. Sometimes you might be filling a form. It's until you finish entering all the details of that form that the button is going to be enabled for you to. And send or click send or register. The whole state is when you move your mouse on top of a button. Focus state is when you like um you are not clicking your mouse is just on top. So there's also a state when you have a button. There is a state change. So that so this is check legal design. So let me just That is loading. So, Mike, uh, this so please, the uh, net stock has opened. So, let me go to event. So, now, if you look here now, this button is also a mouse button. See, mouse, mouse and pointer in the button. Now. And a user. So most times you do, you notice it when you are really on that link. See the mouse is just on your state. What is no see the disabled is until you finish entry the details of that form that the button is going to be enabled. So visited but um, visited with no interaction so most times there are some time that you must have clicked on a button before the button will change color to let you know they have already used it before so this is the design so um, 
this is how to use it. So most times you are designing um, a particular page or let's um, exploit um, page by page. So let's start with page. So let's say you are designing a website or a login page, for example, you click on login and you don't know how to come up with a login page. So this checklist of designing list are things that a login should contain and also places where you can get inspiration and real life scenario of them. Um, login pages because some of us we when we are being asked to design a login page we might know how a login page look like when the aspect of designing is we might not know the that we are supposed to put on a login page so this is like a risk that can help you that can list out the things that the login page team must contain a logo type to identification so you just read it so whenever for example your your login contains logo you just come here and see if it's consistent to come and seek. So if you also also want to see inspiration, there are links here that can lead you to other inspiration. If you want to read blogs here that can help you know how to come up with login page and read here too. A real life example of a login page. So let's click on this. So this is web flow. So I'll just click here and it will lead me to a real life and um, what I mean by real life example is this product that are already used by people because another way to get inspiration whenever you want to design is to review product that is already used um, by use and um, by users like people are already using the product they have users that are making use of it i said the link the link is already on the So someone is asking, can somebody see? So right now I'm on Webflow login. So now I'm on um, I'm on checklist now. So how I got to this place is because I clicked on on web login. So this is sending me to a login login Webflow. How I can see here in Web flow the product that is used by people to create website very see my screen. Can you hear me clearly? Can you see my screen? Yes, um go my yes, right now I'm on Zoom. So go my see if you can see where I am. Right now I'm on check the dying um, website. Can you see from the end? Go ma. Can you see that now I'm on check design? Okay. Maybe most time where you where you don't see my screen is when I'm on Zoom. So that's when you not see my screen. So most times I come here on, on Zoom. To check if some of us are having issue hearing me or so that's why so now i'm on um, check this of design so you can see now so this thing with elements so that the elements will have both things ah. So most times, what is when forget designers are putting her different state put to have the explored somebody trying to okay so right now I'm going to put I'll click on element I can see the after bad X field three so if you want to design a body if you want to design come up with 
design system I want to see of what things you should and if you know what I mean by state state is what you say that default state over state active state open to I mean some type of and people Is the one that is mostly used when so you know, if your business that you are creating is very robust to contain it. So, 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 So I think my network is um, solving is just closed out. So it's the same thing. So this um has to come up with chips because they call you white patterns. So as we move on, we saw that so the advantage of white patterns are like proving design that use on your design that users that use the use and the um the internet people that make use of apps. You know people are used to the way website looks. People are used to the way app works. So most of these design decisions are already use users. Like, whenever you come up with those, you make use of those design elements in your design. You know how to use it. A simple example of a UI pattern is carousel. So carousel, you must have seen carousel, but we don't know it's carousel. So let me show you what a carousel means so that you understand. So if you come to your Instagram, so then Open my Instagram page. This is Instagram page on Instagram here. My Instagram page or UI dot So so that's me on Instagram. So for and I was this is the carousel here. In this particular image it has it has like Letting you know that there are five images here. So, example of a carousel is images of these navigations to let you know that there are images here. I don't know if you want to. Why Instagram designed it like this is that in a scenario where there is no carousel, this image will be like in the four different parts. Imagine this image is one, two, three, four. It will make the page to be very congested. So, they put everything to minimize the space inside the carousel where the user can navigate to different pages with their arrow like this. I don't know if you understand. If you understand what I'm saying, okay, so this is asking. Yeah, so CodeCamp has a YouTube channel. So CodeCamp has a, you can't see my screen now because right now I'm on Zoom. I'm reading the chat was dropped. So um, if you understand what I just explained about Carousel, say something. If you understand what I explain by carousel, say something in the chat section. Okay. So can you see my um, can you can you see my screen now? An example of carousel is this kind of um, image here. So this is an example of a carousel. You can see this image here that this um particular ad posted has like um five dots here, making you know that there are five different pages that this person posted. 
So right now, the person I don't know if you can see my you can see my screen. See something in the chat section. Okay, I have network issues. So you can see that this image has it um, has four dot here. So when the person click arrow here, the person can see other images and that was posted here. So in a scenario where this um was got this image was not in carousel, therefore it was duplicated into four parts, like one, two, three, four. For well, this architecture to design is one, two, three, four. This place is going to be jam-packed. That's why whenever you are placing more than posting more than four images everything will be jam-packed like this and it will bring out an arrow for you to see to see they can click like this or swipe left to see other images so that's a typical example of a carousel so somebody's asking where is checklist or design checklist or design the link is on the discord uh, channel so i pasted the link there so maybe it's your network. So do anyone have any questions so far? Do anyone have any questions so far? So let's create a simple button. So can you see my screen now? Now I'm on Figma. Can you see my screen? Now I'm on Figma. Can you see my screen? Um, Dory, I think you need to stop um, sharing and share the Figma file. You're actually sharing your browser right now. Right now I'm on Figma. Can you see Can you see my screen now? Wow, maybe my, I don't know, my network is having issue from my end. I don't know if it's... Okay, let me refresh my um, my let me refresh and join back again. Can you see my screen now? Can 
can you see my screen? Right now I'm on Figma. Okay. So now I want to Let's create and um, let's create a button. So let's just create buttons. So we just create buttons. And... So now to create a simple button. To create a simple button, I'm going to create um, square. So your button size depends on the platform you're designing for. If it's for a mobile app or a website, so this app, this um, that's the use for mobile app. So our button size is going to have height of. Uh, 56 or 48 so right here it can look very small but when it's being placed in an app it's going to fit so let me just show you what i'm doing and i'll drag this here so you can see if this is used for button Show you this. This can be used for a button on mobile app. That's my question. Okay. Most times, an element might look very tiny to you. As I said, most times the element might look very tiny, but when it is being developed, you discover that you might have sizing issues. Because most times it might be chosen, oh, the button is too tiny. Why didn't you make it big? Because right now, the way we are viewing this actually is very tiny. So we have to zoom close to design. So I already have my color saved. So I'll just come here and come to this part, primary color. And I'll leave my button rounded corner of 10. And I'll give it a label. So I'll call this button. This way, font is very big. I'll just reduce it to 16. We already have our our font saved, so I can upload this one. So this is my um, type is I'll come here and update and um, update about the platform size 18. I'll add it here. Let me come back and update it to 18. So I'll come here to my button label. I'll call this primary button. So I will know when you see how we're going to use it. I'll use this one is 18. Remember our font size, we need terms, font style, in bold. So we make sure it's in the center. So Figma has this red line that when you are trying to place things, it helps you know whether the element is in the center. So as you can see now, this button is in the center. So this is our primary button. So the next thing that we need to fix is our disabled state. For example, we want to design for disabled state. So remember this is our three color. So 
would be Style. So I'll come here, it's on rectangle, the task style, so it will give me access to add the grid color, which is for our wood water. So there's also some scenario where you might want to, also want to define who was this. I'll just Then hover space. Remember what is what if somebody hovers on this, what should happen? I'll come here click on this. Hover state I can set to make this a little bit darker. Oh, like that. I can just put it like this. So, that's it. so, so far, do anyone have any question? So far, do anyone have any question? So instead of any other question, we'll call it a day. Um, we'll have the cutting here, so we'll continue from here in our next class. So for those that have done the the first factors in the elements, your scores will be coming up so that you can continue with the second task. So that will be all for this class guys. See you all in our next class. Okay, so um Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh yeah, so you guys should hold on. Well, anybody that leaves, the person will lose out, sir. So no prob no problem. Um so Gloria, let me just attend to these uh uh to the intermediator. So first of all, um grading is going to be done. So let me, I wanted to work um I and your trainer, uh, both of us will be grading your tasks, right? But that grading is not going to be done now. In fact, I actually wanted us to do it now, but I'm going to, I've gone through the submission, right? And this is unlike me though. I've gone through the submissions and um, I'll just, oh, by the way, there's also another task for people in stage one. There's also a task waiting for you too. So um, yeah, so we need to move you guys out of this test stage. But the thing is this, and I want to say this now, there is no second chance, okay? So if you have done your task from now till the end of today, go and check it again, right? There are a lot of things that I'm going to be looking out for. We are going to be look, looking out for, um, I especially, right? I and Gloria. There's something, a lot of things are going to be looking out for that. If it's not there, then you are definitely not what you're being in the intermediate. I don't have to list it out, right? For some of you who probably you just you did one training somewhere and then you feel like because you did it two months somewhere, it means that you are qualified to switch to um, intermediate. I don't know you. I don't know where you did your training. I don't trust the training, not because it's not good. I don't know, but I don't want to take chances because we are trying as much as possible not to churn out um, 
people who don't really know what they are doing. So let me start. This is how I'm going to know um, how many persons know what they are doing. So let me see if I can help out in and give a bit of clarity. But I'll do that first by first of all asking a question. Who on this call can tell me three things based on your task? Who on this call can tell me three things that your uh, is being required of you as far as that task is concerned? Who among who among you can do that? Hello, nobody. If nobody can say anything, then I think we'll just end now. I can't. It means that. Somebody's <laughs> hand is raised. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. I've seen the person's hand. So it's either, so just one person. So that it's either we have shy people or um, people who are not, who are definitely not up for it. Probably, I actually saw somebody's board. And I knew that it was not the person that did it. That one, it was already clear. And the person did not know. The person did not do it very well. <laughs> the person did not hide his or her. You know, the person did not clean. How do they call it? Is it um, cover your tracks? Yes. So someone said, is it in regards to the design of um, my time, my education, my understanding? No. Great profile, design rationale, landing page, wire frame, and I no that's not uh, leave the grid task let's take out take out grid task out of that no okay benny go ahead let me hear benny okay um can you hear me yes go ahead all right good evening so i i think okay taking out the grid task so i'm looking at the intermediate task um test itself so i guess uh, one of the things that I'm actually looking at is uh our eyes for detail in terms of what I mean by that is um, the design as per se. So um, the, our trainer actually want to see how well we can come up with good design system, um, good design. And then also we've had um, the high fidelity here, um, the wireframe. So one of the things is the um, wireframings and also um, we, we looked at um, also the sign up and sign in. So those are the three things basically that um, I think the are actually looking forward to. Um, to the authentication pages, um, the, the home screen, and also the wireframe, which could be high fidelity, I think. Sorry, um, low fee. Hmm. Uh, uh, well, you, you said just uh one of it you know the things you said right uh you actually said one just one out of the things that i want to hear right um does anybody want to anybody else can somebody drop the question on the chat quickly not leave the like i said leave the grids leave the grids task all those things are, that one is um the mark there is not so much So can anybody quickly just drop the task there? Okay. Now, so, so this is the task, right? Design a landing page for a language learning platform. Objective is this and blah 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 blah. This is your these are your deliverables, right? Um, that means at the end, you know, you should have a wire wireframes for the landing page layout and structure, a high fidelity prototype, and um your design is visually appealing and persuasive stuff, then using a Google Doc, that that that. Now, considerations. There are about three considerations there. Now I want to ask again. <laughs> so, in all these things, what do you guys think I am going to be looking out for? I'll ask one more time before I go go into what I want to say. Anybody wants to try? Like I said, all some of what all the things that was listed on the um 
on the on the chat. They are good, of course, to look at, but that's not key for me. It's not a key thing for me at all. And I'll tell you why, right? Benny just mentioned only one. He mentioned only one. Communication to the visitors. Okay, so Mojisola, you're a bit close. Just I like, did not put it well, but uh, yeah, you're, you're, you're kind of, you're, you're close. User-centered design. Of course, your design should be user-centered. That's for sure. It's That's generic. Simplicity, well, yeah, these are things that should be there now. Okay, so, Dory, let me not drag you guys. Okay. Now, one of the things you need to understand, one of the things that will help you, right, in this task, and not just in this task, in everything, in as far as Code Camp is concerned and beyond, is you need to be able to understand two things. The task, the two or three, the task that is being given, the person that is giving the task, right? And the expectation, which has to do with how does the person see you when the person gives you that task, right? This is not a task for people who just came into um, um, UI UX for the first time. No, this is a task for people. Now, let me even ask you a question. Do you think I don't know that some of you don't have portfolio? Do you think I don't know that some of you have probably designed one or two things? Some of you probably have, maybe you must have designed and built a design the website that is currently live right but yet I mean, do you think i don't know that i know you can some of you can choose colors i i know that some of you of course if if i even see anybody that has alignment issue you haven't done that now there's no need to grade you i know all these things but i can forgive some of these things if one major thing is there and what's that major thing let's let me go to the task let me go show you guys something that's and then I'll ask you a question. Now, in the objective, right? First of all, you guys need to understand this is beyond the task. You're designing a product. And if you don't have the understanding, then you 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 have a problem. If you feel this is just task. No, designers, people don't do task. Everything you're doing is product-centered. Now, when you read the um, objective, who can tell me one thing that stands out in that objective and that is see that is the thing i'm looking out for see i'm not looking out for in as much as of course it will carry weight your ui your colors your all these things yeah, yeah those things are nice but there is one focal thing right now from the objective is there anybody that can try what is the expectation from the objective okay ayobami go ahead Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, quickly. Okay, I think um is for the landing page to be able to uh, um to drive users to sign up to use the product exactly. Okay, that's one point, right? So now let me ask you a question, right? Ayobami, just unmute, right? Let me ask you a question quickly. Now, do you think that um let me use some of the things that was listed here. Do you think layout and spacing, color, do you think those will drive a user to sign up? Am I expected to answer? I'm asking you, yes, I'm asking you. I'm just, not because oh, you okay. said it, I'm just, we are having a conversation right now. So do you think layout, color, you know, do you think those will drive a user to sign up? Okay, first of all, I think if, um, a page is messy or overloaded, and um, we have colors contradicting, the user might feel overwhelmed to go through it. Okay, hold on. Okay. If, what if the color is not overwhelming? Let's say it's even just two colors, right? Do you think color, and uh, what's the other one the, guy, the other person dropped? Layout and spacing. Do you think these things, you know, visual hierarchy, do you think... Um, uh, you know, what's the other one, Seth? Okay, yeah. Visual hierarchy, layout, spacing, color. Do you think these things will drive user sign up? Um, I really don't know how to give you an answer, but I just think they are part of design principles that helps. But okay. yeah. Okay, yeah. hold on. Uh, somebody's answering me. Um, Mojisola said yes. Mojisola, give me your reason. 
quickly, quickly. And this is okay. it. Yeah, go ahead. Good evening. So I yes. believe um every color has its code, has its meaning. So if I'm using a color that doesn't signify what um lingua boost means, I don't think it will help the customer okay. or the visitor. Okay, so let me ask you a question. How many websites have you how many products have you used just because you liked the color? Because the Not color because I like the color. Because it's okay. But because I think the color signifies okay, so, the company. Okay, good. So let me ask you a question. Would you buy um, let's say you want to design a product, not a website, not a product, and it's a tractor. You know, a tractor is a product, a machinery, is a, a tractor, right? It has to do with agriculture and all those stuff, right? Would you buy a tractor because the color actually suits, you know, you know of course, let's say there's a, a tractor now, you're, you're into farming, and you need to buy a tractor, right? And you now see a tractor that is red. Or let's, in fact, you're not even into farming or whatever, but you just come and you've seen... Uh, people, you have seen machineries everywhere and all this stuff. And you see a red machinery, and then you now see a very, very nice black. Black is my favorite color. So, yeah, I now see black machinery, and I'm like, oh my, that machinery is so black. I love black. And then I'll, it interests me. I'm asking you do, you, do you do you get the question I'm asking? Yes. So, going, so is it going with your preference? Going with my preference, yes. Let's 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 start with my preference, yes. Would I go with my preference if I was the one? Is mm -hmm. that the question, sir? Well, it yes. depends. It depends okay. if it's something. If we are working, doesn't consign customers. I'm just delivering the goods. It is my preference, and I'm the only one working in that company. Fine, but if people are working there at that same company, I think I need to factor that that thing that so oh, it's not just me that is working here. I have other colleagues and black my mean danger or red my mean danger. Oh, orange um suits this tractor, not I shouldn't be buying black. This can be dangerous at night or something. Yes, I think I'll factor that. Okay. So I shouldn't so... move with my preference. So this is why you are no longer beginners. Okay, Gloria, say what you want to say there. Let me let me let me address okay. something. The thing that gets to my mind is functionality because something might look okay. fine, but it might not be functional. Thank so you. So if something looks fine and it's not functional, it's not solving the problem. So there are some website that looks ugly, but it's functional. People will use it because it's solving their problem. So there are some designs that you might come up with. It looks very fine, nice color, but it's not functional. It's not solving the problem. Those kind of designs are not still solving. It's not still working. So that's just what came to my mind. Okay, so thank you. Now, this is it, guys. You are no longer beginners, right? If you should be in this class, you shouldn't think like a beginner anymore. One of the things you learned, right, when you were started, off, they'll tell you color, design this, color, color, this, typography, these. Those are fine, but what are they? Um, if I'm mis if I'm not mistaken, they are elements of design. They are just elements. They are not the main thing. Now, this is a typical example. Some of you may not know it, but some of you do. Naira Land. If you can go to nairaland.com, I think or NG or so, that website has almost. In fact, that website is as old as what I don't know, but yet it is still that way. It's not fine. Edit letters are small, there's no color blast, there's nothing. It's just like see that website just looks like HTML. It doesn't even look like there's a CSS in it. But Naira Land, as at back then, 20, even as, as odd as it was, people were using it because it was solving a problem, it was addressing a need. Guys, that is what I am going to be looking out for when I grade you. It is not just your color. Your color does not trip me because there is what we call beautiful nonsense. There's what we call what beautiful what nonsense. It's very fine. Oh, colors, colors. Oh, nice, 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 nice. This is nice. If that you, if I come to your lingua boost and it is so fine, but I do not get the information that actually would coerce me to it's not your color that will make me sign up no it is not even your visual hierarchy 
what see there's something that you, uh, you guys need to understand about hierarchy it's, um, it's more like arrangement yes talking about hierarchy you have hero section you now want to say okay fine maybe in the my own visual hierarchy i want to put about us first no problem that's your own hierarchy but you if that same about us does not pass the information that can spur the user to sign up you have still not gotten that user and you cannot generate what sign ups one of the things that generates sign up is not color it is content and one of the things all of you must learn here is ux writing it will not teach you you're gonna learn it by force in fact one of the things i won't do your you know uh, in fact i'm going to be fully involved with gloria in this track right because i'm i'm, I'm one person that is crazy about ux Okay, in as much as your you can do all your UI, that's fine. I I can still get interested in it, but see UX, right? Because we have I have worked with designers. We have a lot of designers who they are good with UIs, but UIs is not enough, and that's what a lot of you are good at. There's nothing like in CodeCamp we don't we don't we don't train UI designers, or we just train UX designers. No. In fact, uh, we 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 are going beyond just UI UX into product design. You will get there. You will think. See, see this people's head. You will think like a designer. You have to think that way, right? It is not about just colors are good. Those are elements. That's what they are called. They are element. You have elements of designs. You have principles. You need to understand these two things. You have gone beyond where you you were. So what am I saying? If I go to your board, I might see a nice UI and I'll be fine. But you see here uh, in this task, look at the objectives. Look at the objectives very well and go and check your design. This, the Lingua Boost, which offers on like the landing page should effectively convey the platform's value proposition. Who on this call can explain what a value proposition is? Anybody quickly. Anybody that raised their hand in the next 10 seconds, I'll know that you don't go to Google and open it or you have asked chat GPT. See, nobody. 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 Some people want to quickly go and check it out. You understand? Okay, Emmanuel, go ahead. <laughs> Some people want to prove me wrong. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, all right, sir. Um, what I understand about that is that the landing page you communicate what exactly the website is talking about without even thinking twice okay well not direct not really in a way you you get got a part of it but there's one who else is anybody where's the other guy that raised or lady that raised his hand um Okay, it was uh, this Nathaniel. It was Nathaniel's hand I saw. Go ahead. Okay, I, I think the proposition means what you're actually offering. What thank you're, you. Thank you. you're thank actually you. Thank you. solving. Yeah, thank you. Right, thank you. What you're solving, that's it. What do you have to offer? What value do you have? A typical example, just go and check out um Uber. Uber I think that's Uber or Bolt. Go and check their landing page. You have to, you see, if you cannot communicate that value proposition, if your landing page does not, you, as far as I'm concerned, you have failed the test. And I am not testing you for only UI. No, that is not what I and Gloria is going to test you guys for. So if it doesn't communicate, you have failed. The second thing is to encourage user sign up. The question is, how can... I make this page encourage people to sign up. How? What do I need to do? What inform is information? It's not design. It's not color. What information do I have to present that when the user sees it, oh, they'll be like, in fact, they'll feel like, wait, they, them not even learning a language is a sin. Like, why am I, what am I doing with my life? Why have I not even started learning a language? That is what encouraging user would sign up. Well, the other one showcase down is very clear. Down is like it's 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 clear. It's clear. So from now till the end of today, please, please 
go through what you have done for those of you that have submitted, right? I'll hold off touching and grading anybody so that it won't be like, uh, you know, I did not know, right? I'm not even supposed to do this, but this is just me going out of my comfort zone, right? So, or is it comfort zone or discomfort zone? Well, whichever one it is. So go through, right? And make sure your UI, in fact, if I want to give your UI a, 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 a percentage or a mark, I'll probably just give it 30. And your UX and the, 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 the main thing, I'll give it 70 marks. If I like left for me, what that's just it. Someone says, What if we did a good job and touch it now and it becomes bad? Then that means you do you don't even know what you're doing. And if you don't know what you're doing, then you should not be an intermediate. If you did a good job, you just said what well, if you did a good job, you've done a good job, then don't touch it. If you're confident, because what you're gonna put there is what you know, is what you know, and that is what I want to test. I want to test what you know. So if what you know is not, doesn't actually show me, then you shouldn't be here. Go to the beginner, go and know it. Hmm? Go down there. I'm very involved. I'm going to be very involved in UI UX in this cohort. Very, I'll be very active, like overactive. More active than I've ever been, you know. So I'm I'm going to work, I'm going to work as a, on, on a mentor, mentorship level, where right, to assist the trainers. And I'm going to be very, very involved, both in in your gradings, in everything, I'll be involved. So step up, right? You have two people, two problems now in your life. I and Glory. Before it was just her, now we are two. You have no choice but to be better. Like, you don't have a choice. Is it that, there's, is that you shape into being the best or you shape out of it, right? But if you decide to be, if you decide to shape in, you the shape, you will have that shape by force. You'll be like an arm whoever who who will make sure that we arrange you very well. And trust me, it's for your own good. Like I said, I've worked with designers and a lot of times I get um I get disappointed in what I hear them say and what I see them do. I get I get disappointed. There are, there are designers that if, when they call them to a meeting, a product meeting. They don't have anything to say. They have nothing to offer. Or maybe if they haven't said anything, they are saying, you're talking left, they are talking right. Why? Because the only thing they know is give me user stories. Just give me user stories. Let me go. I See, let me see. Is there anybody here? Be very honest with yourself. Eh? Is there any of you that the, the first thing you did is to, in fact, it's not, I won't say the first thing you did. Uh, how would I put it? Okay, let me put it. Let me rephrase that. Is there anybody here that did not see this task and then just went to start looking for mood board? Is there anybody here? Don't lie, yo. Like when you saw the task, you didn't go to you. You did not. You did not go to mood board. You just went. You just said, "Okay, no, 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 no. Let me not look for mood board. Let me understand." A lot of you, once you saw design landing page for a this whoop, what did you do? Mood board, mood board, mood board. You gotta start checking for mood boards, mood mood boards everywhere. That's what designers know how to do. Mood board. They are people are mood boarders. But one thing you fail to understand is this: if you do not understand what is expected of you, you will see the wrong mood board and use it. That's the truth. A you see, you, there are beautiful mood boards that are not usable based on what you want to achieve. So. Well, basically what I'm giving you, I'm giving you guys a heads up. You have to be a thinking designer, a designer that is curious, a designer that asks questions, a designer that understands the expectation. There is something your trainer expects from you when the trainer gives you a task. It comes from a certain level of expectation that, okay, you should know this or you should be at this level. So because you're at this level, I should know this. Okay, take this task and what we'll do it. Don't rush into designs. Don't rush into things. Understand it. One, well, I'm, I'm taking my time to say this. There are 26 of you. I'll still leave this. I wanted to pause the recording before doing this, but I'll leave it so that those who will watch will listen again because I won't take, there will, will not be, give me a second chance. No, there won't be. I won't give it. Okay. Um, I wish you guys all the best. Uh, Gloria, do you have anything to say? But I think I am done. Uh, at this point, thank you very much. Okay, well, in the absence of nothing, yeah.
That's fine. So, guys, thank you very much. So, get to your task. Grading is going to commence tomorrow morning, right? Grading and promotion will be done tomorrow. So, let take this time to round up whatever it is you need to round up. Good luck and have a wonderful weekend.